Hey, hey, happy Wednesday. We are here again with our Mule and Donkey online clinic. Steve, how are you doing? Well, right now I'm about to get blown away. We just had a big storm come in and I've been working on my gate and trying to, anyway, it's been a bugger and the, I barely, I barely, I'm not done yet. I still got to go back and finish it up, but we're, we're getting there. You know, there's always something else to do on this ranch, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it, <laughs> there is always something to do. I'm glad that we're getting going here. Um, we've got quite a few good questions that have come in uh, on the bottom of the in the comment section below, which reminds me, if you're joining us, uh, whether this is your first time or you've been hanging out with us for a while, my name's Dave, this is Steve Edwards, and uh, we're just here to talk mules and donkeys for the next uh, 60 minutes or so. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below, and we'll go ahead and answer them. And uh, one of the things that y'all have been so great about doing is a uh, introducing us to, to new folks. So if you have not yet shared uh, our live stream, uh, go ahead and do that. There's a little share button at the bottom of the screen. It's got like a little arrow that points up and out. Just click that and share it to your wall and just say why you like tuning in. And, and that'll help us connect with some new folks who, uh, who, who haven't been able to dial in and get exactly what they're looking for out of their mule. They're always asking, you know, why is my mule doing this? Well, they can come here and they can find out. So um, so yeah, if this is the first time, welcome. We're just going to hang out and chat. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to know is where, who's watching today and where are you guys watching from? Um, we, we go international almost every single, uh, broadcast that we do. And, oh, I forgot to tell you this, Steve. Um, we almost didn't have a Facebook broadcast today. Uh oh, big news. Facebook has been down for a big chunk of the day today. So oh. I, uh, I had an email ready to go, uh, saying, Hey, Facebook's down. We'll do a broadcast, but we'll, uh, we'll do it over on YouTube. Um, but, uh, but they got their act together. So we're actually able to have it, but it was getting kind of close there. Ooh. Ah, electronics. Oh, yes. Electronics. That's right. We've got Haley Williams. We've got Tracy Foley. We've got Pam Costello. Uh, we've got Lori Bean. We've got Leah Kersey. Uh, let's see here. Courtney Crowder, Sundance Kid, Ramiro Trevino, uh, Gloria Meyer, Jack Reagan, and Dorothy Dot Hammett. Everyone hanging out. It's so good to see you guys. If you haven't posted where you're watching from, uh, please do that. Would love to see that. Uh, so I say we get right into it. What do you say, Steve? Let's get her done. All right. So Dorothy is the first one to have uh, left a comment. And Dorothy says, what type of grain pellet do you recommend feeding a mature mule, 12 and 8 years old? The John Mule is a thoroughbred cross and Amali is a quarter horse cross. Uh, they have access to limited natural grass pasture and coastal hay. Um, and then the second question is your opinion on feeding alfalfa pellets. Okay, uh, number one, you know, our, our health of our animal depends on its feed tremendously. And the downside of alfalfa uh, if you get a chance, go online and, and you can read about it. But it builds up almost like a, a golf ball size uh, uh, stone. Uh, and little by little, of course, it kind of depends on maybe some of the country you're from. But just, I've heard it from about every state. Uh, and, and it really messes up the uh, urinary system. So and besides that, uh, the alfalfa is way too much carbohydrates, way much too much sugar. Uh, for your meals. What you don't want to do, folks, is give a lot of carbohydrates to your meals while they're just standing around. You're going to go to work. You're saddling up that day. You're harnessing up that day. And so they need the energy. They need the grain. They need uh, those carbohydrates. I feed a whole oat. That's natural. Uh, the nice thing about whole oats is it does give them plenty of energy, but it also helps the top line, builds that up. So my thing is uh, they don't need the oats. They don't need, uh, uh, especially don't need alfalfa. They don't need the oats because it makes them crazy. It's like crack cocaine to a cocaine addict. You know, they don't need it, you know, uh, at all. So, and then as far as the alfalfa hay, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's really tough on these mules. It's, Really, and, and horses too. It's not just mules. It's equine, period. Fine for cattle. But when you get these new cuttings, you got the new first, second, and third cuttings coming up. That's powerful stuff. And, and it's a good, also a good way to collect your, uh, your equine. 
Very good. So uh, we've got a, I put a link to your article, uh, Mules Can't Stand Prosperity. I feel like we're linking to that just about every single week. Great article, really good place to go. If you have questions about uh, feed, nutrition, leaving your mules out to pasture, things like that. Um, and then uh, I'll put a link to the feed talk in there as well. Seems like we're getting a lot of nutrition questions. So I think there's an article in there that we'll need to be doing. Um, we've yeah. got a uh, D Scholl. Hi from Australia. We've got a uh, Debbie newbie from cool California and a uh, David Bengali hopping in. This is past my bedtime. So it had better be good. <laughs> <laughs> Drink some of your coffee, Dave. It'll be all right. Dave. That's right. Get some of that come along coffee. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have come along coffee up here on the website shortly, and it is going to be in three flavors: the ask, tell, and demand flavor. <laughs> all right, good deal. That's da gonna be great. David and I were on the phone, and uh, and he goes, "I don't know what Steve would think about this." I said, "Oh no, Steve would definitely love the ask, tell, demand, the light." medium and dark roast coffee. So we'll get that up ah. on the website. It's going to be awesome. That's um, going to be good. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you have a lesson plan to follow uh, your training DVD? So after you get through the training DVDs, do you have a lesson plan to follow? Um, and then follow up. This is from Ramiro. And then follow up. When do you start teaching your mules to laterally flex? I do not do lateral flexions. If you want to have a mule run away, start doing lateral flexions. So lateral reflections means you bend them around to the right, bend them around to the left. If you ever see me do any type of lateral flexion at all, it is barely tip the nose to the right. That's all. At the throat latch. Boom. That's it. The only type of uh, softening I do is on the sur single with a rope halter to start with, adjust the two fingers above the nostril so that the head comes down. It rounds out the back, gets the hind quarters up underneath them, goes from there. If you do like a lot of these horse people do, and they bend them around the right and left, one of these days, you're going to need to go to the right, and the mule wants to go to the left. Pretty soon, this mule will go over and stick his nose right to his knee, and he's got you, and he takes off running sideways. Now, I quit doing lateral flexions 25 years ago, but every time I do a clinic, and I have somebody say uh, that they can't stop the mule, and I say, all right, we'll do your one rein stop like you usually do. That mule buries his nose into the leg and takes off running sideways. So no lateral flexions. Only, only, only use a rope halter to start with and adjust it up. And it goes down with two strings back to your sur single. The mule gets his head down, nose on the vertical, rounds out his back, hind in out, goes underneath him, does good. Because mules are so sensitive with their nose, you'll be able to get them to soften all five major neck muscles and do good. Because I use a double twisted wire snaffle bit on my mule riders martingale, you barely have to touch that reins, barely. And you're going to get response and get lots of respect. Very good. Uh, and then the, the question was, after I've gone through all of your DVDs, what should I be doing? Ride. Just ride. Get in the it. saddle and go down the trail. If you've gone through all of my DVDs, you learn how to ask, tell, demand. You learn how to barely move your hands. You learn how to sit down in the seat. You use 80% off your legs. If you're there, good for you. Go ride and enjoy. Just remember, and folks, everybody's got to get this in your mind. They do not stay, quote, trained. Mm-hmm. No more than your car stays running. Once in a while, you got to go to a mechanic and have brakes put on it or do it yourself or tune up or something like that. Things break down. And one day, you know, it could be maybe you, 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 uh, have a hoof problem. Could be maybe you've got a tooth problem. Could be lots of things and it could set you back. And it could even be you loaned your mule to Uncle Harry and Uncle Harry pulled on him. And now the mule screwed up. Well, that's a possibility too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is one thing that is a little bit of a head tilt, like, cause, cause you'll get folks selling them. You'll say, Oh, he's broke. Oh, he's, he's ridden up and down the Grand Canyon, you know, 50 times. Oh, he's good. He's trained. He's good to go. And then yeah. we get calls and messages all the time and, and I'm sending them to you with, uh, you saying, Hey, look, look, folks, uh, it doesn't matter how much he's ridden. Um, that mule always is going to need tune-ups. That mule is always going to need to to c continue to learn things, correct? 
That's right, exactly. And here's the thing we we got to understand. Most of these mules folks out there don't have a foundation. I wouldn't call them trained. I would call them they don't have a foundation. And when it comes down to having one really right, I've rode some of these mules like my wife's mule 24 years. She still wasn't as good as I'd like to have had her. I was always doing better, you know. But when it comes down to it, folks, uh, these mules are all going to have some kind of little hole on them. Just like some people like Fords because of this or Chevy's because of that. But they all got their quirks. And these none of these mules are perfect by any means. You know, they're going to be as, uh, let me put it like this, they're going to be as good as you are. I used to take my mules to a clinic, and you'd see me ride that mule just doing everything just right. Man, everybody go, oh, wow, look at that mule train. And then I'd bring somebody down out of the audience and say, climb on my mule. They climb on that mule. 15 minutes later, uh, the mule would act, acts like it never even been trained before. Well, that's because that person didn't know how to communicate fully to the mule. And there's a major difference with your communication, folks. There's a lot more than just using your hands. It's using your voice, hands, legs, and seat. Very good. Hey, Steve, I'm going to have you do something real quick. Can you there tilt the camera up just a little bit? We're getting the top of your head cut off just a little bit there. Oh, wow. Well, that's a, that's not a big deal then. There we go. And then maybe tilt it down, split the difference, tilt it back down just a little bit, and we'll be good to go. So we've got a couple more folks. Oh. Uh, whoa! <laughs> All right, we're right. There we go. Okay, now some, I need to go. Some folks right. right there were like, what's happening? Yeah. Okay, we're good right there. That's, How's that? That's perfect. Um, we've got a couple more folks here. We've got uh, Micah Kinney. We've got uh, Richard Matthews, Chaplain Steve. Yeah. We've got uh, Sam Captain. Renee Crawford uh, all tuning in. So it's good to have you guys. If you haven't, if you're watching um, and you haven't said hello yet, just say hello in the comment section. We just want to know that you're here. We like knowing that uh, that uh, that we're not alone. We like knowing that you're here and and saying hi to everybody. So let's see here. Uh, the next question that I got was, uh, this one's from Courtney Crowder. Courtney says, do you recommend a grazing muzzle on lush pasture? My mule has 24-7 access to uh, fescue hay, and in a few weeks, he will be moved into the summer pasture with an abundance of fescue grass. He's definitely not underweight, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be like you and I going to a smorgasbord every day. We'll be flat putting the pounds on. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do that, folks. You know, yes, a muzzle. If you absolutely got no place else to put them, um, I suppose so. Grazing muzzle will be perfect. Uh, and, and I've got muzzles that I use when I put up, when I have my mules, when I'm packing them back in the mountains. But let's go back to this. I really prefer, rather than having the animals on a smorgasbord every day, I prefer to put them into individual corral. Feed them individually. I know that's hard, folks. You got all that free grass. But, you know, there are times when these animals are not doing well physically or mentally. And you don't know it when they're out there on the pasture. They, you don't. You got to know about their food and their, and their water intake and what their manure looks like and their water looks like. And let me just give you an example why. I just had, I forgot what her name is right now, the lady from Netherlands. Yolanda. Yolanda, she just called me about an hour and a half ago uh, before I went back out there and worked on the gate again. And she thinks her mules got strangles. And so she was wanting to know what to do. The veterinarians don't, up there don't know how to handle it and this sort of thing. So it goes back to this, folks. I can tell you some sad stories of people walking out and finding their mule dead or, or having them, you know, collect or, you know, lots of things. You know, I prefer put them in a pen. 20 by 20 is the biggest. Feed them, water them, keep an eye on them. Uh, but otherwise, if you have to put them in a pasture, put a, put a muzzle on them, absolutely. And if they're already too fat, don't put them out there at all. You know, uh, you've got all that weight on a donkey foot. Get that in your mind, folks. This is a donkey foot. So you think about putting a tight shoe on and putting some tight pants and see how uncomfortable you are, you know. So I, I strongly suggest uh, you feed them, you maintain them accordingly. Very good. Um, let's see here. Uh, another question uh, from Lori. Lori says, I've heard your feeding video for working uh, working or uh, working on mature mules. 
How much should we be feeding a two or three year old youngster that is still growing? Thanks so much. Well, it, it's also going to depend, folks, on how much you are riding and working the mule. They're going to be growing till they're seven years old. So you're going to feed them accordingly. Now, I can tell you that when I'm training on my colts, I keep feed in front of them all the time. Only time I feed grain, which is whole oats, is when I'm getting ready to ride them. I'm, I put the most muzzle on their nose and I let them go to eating that uh, whole oats. And then I'm, as I'm saddling and they eat as much as they need while I'm saddling. And then when I'm training them the next hour and a half, two hours, they burn that energy off. But, uh, that, that that's my suggestion for you. Very good. We're, uh, we're cruising right along here. And, uh, let's see. We have a couple more people joining us. Kevin Albright hopped in. Hey, Kevin. Good to see you. Kevin. Uh, yeah. we've got, uh, William from Virginia, uh, David Scholl. Uh, hey, Steve and Dave. Nice, hot, and humid here in Australia. Yeah. It's been really nice out here, uh, in Arizona. It's, uh, it yeah. was overcast a little bit earlier today. I'm looking out the window now and I see two, maybe four little clouds there, and that's about it. What's it look like out there? It's black around here. Is it? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, heavy clouds, uh, a heavy wind. The wind is just really heavy. Making its uh, way out there. Yeah, but that's okay. It's we had, We've had a lot of rain all night last night, soaked yep. in good. Probably had a good three-quarters of an inch last night, so yeah. it's a good lick. It is good. I'll tell you what, um, I, was out on, uh, I was out on Sunday. We've got a, a, a small backyard and uh, is all dirt. So I went out and I found, um, I found, uh, get this, used athletic turf, like used fake grass that were on like soccer field or anything like that. And yeah. so, uh, and so I rolled it out in the backyard. And so now we've got grass all in the backyard and the kids go out there and play and it's all good to go. And wouldn't you know it, the day after I finish it, it just starts raining, raining, raining. Yeah. Oh, at least ways they're not splashing in the mud. I know, right? They're not splashing in the mud. They'll get back out there before we know it. And it's, it's going to go from about rainy and cool to 115 overnight. But you know yeah. what? We will, we will live with it for the rest of the year. Okay. So let's go here. We've got another question. Haley says that she's, uh, Mark's daughter and watching for him tonight. He had to work overtime. So we're glad to have you here. Uh, Melinda from, uh, pa uh Pahrump, Nevada. And then, uh, let's see, let's, cruise. I'm going to be up in Pahrump next month. Are you really? Yeah. Where I'm about be is up. that in the state? Uh, it's, it's at down close to the bottom, right oh, where okay. the Arizona two of them come together. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be up there at a place called front site and we're going to be doing some combat shooting. Oh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. you'll have to get some pictures. Uh, I'll do that. Let's see. Micah Kinney says, Roughly how do long do you normally do groundwork with full tack on the mule before you start climbing into the saddle? Well, all, all of my ground foundation is usually about six months uh, with, uh, with the mules. Uh, and the saddling, the, I usually sur-single them pretty consistently, four to six hours a, a week, uh, the first three months. And then uh, the next two months, uh, with the bidding and the sur singling and usually the last month with a complete saddle on and then go from there. It's, you know, what it is, it's more of a, it's more of a building up your confidence time. Uh, I've had some of these mules I've done clinics on and, and I've, and I've, I've never ridden them before and in 30 minutes I'm riding them. That's me. Okay. And of course that was also back when I was younger and dumber, but it's just a matter of, <laughs> of how much work that I need to do, you know, to get one. And some of these mules are just as natural as can be. So, you know, I've climbed on these mules in less than 30 minutes worth of work. Uh, but then my, my preference is six months builds a foundation. When the mule is consistently listening to you, heads down, ears moving around, soft, willing, you know, when they're doing that, stand up in the stirrup. That works good. Do that three times, then stand up in the stirrup, have somebody standing at the head, petting and rubbing on the mule, throw your leg over, stand there, step there, get back off again, get up and do it again. I always do things, Dave, in the three, six, nine, twelve. So three times today, I climb and sit on his, on his back, then I'll give it a few days later and I'll do those three times and I'll do three more making six and then I'll put some time between that, let him take a break and then I'll do nine times. 
and then I'll have somebody walk off my video uh, uh, foundation cold starting. You can see how I do it in there. Uh, you'll see five different people, five different cults, and you'll see how I work them. And these people are all climbing on these animals. They're not bronc riders. It's the first time they've ever sat in the middle of an untrained meal, and you see how well it goes. That'd be that'd be a good video for them right there. Dave. Yeah, I'll put that in the comment section. So I've got a question, and I want to just hear you talk a little bit about this. It seems like um, and, and maybe this is just me not knowing, you know, mules and things like that. But it seems to me that folks will have a young mule. They'll have, a, you know, a little bit older, you know, like a teenager type mule. Then they'll have one that's a bit older than really, you know, quite seasoned. Is is the training program, you know, going to be pretty similar for all of them? Is it going to because if I've got a 10 year old or a 14 year old, like, how different is the training program or how different is it going to be uh, the prescription that you would give for that than, say, like an 18-year-old and a 7-year-old? Is it all typically the same? Do you find that it varies? Because I feel like folks are often saying, well, here's my situation. Here's my mule. You know, that might work for an older mule or that might be what you do with a younger mule. So how how much similarity is there in, with what you're talking about um across all of the ages, you know, save a, 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 a new one or something like that. Yeah. All right. So we'll take a three-year-old. We'll take a 23-year-old. I do all of my steps still the same. Here's the same. This is, I put the, I put the come along hitch on. I work them there. I use the rope halter. I work them there. I bid them up and I start asking questions of them. In other words, the, the three-year-old doesn't have a whole lot that's that's a bother to him that he has concerns about. You know, uh, if he does have a concern, I'll sit there for a few minutes. It's usually just a, oh, what's that? But uh, uh, it's the older ones that say, ah, I ain't doing that because the past 10 people, they they couldn't tell me how to do it. So I didn't do it. So then he refuses. Well, then I come to that spot in my training where I'm flipping the switches saying that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Whoop. We got a problem. And we got a problem in that the mule, for instance, when I want him to go to the left, he tightens all five major neck muscles in and bulls it into me. All right. It's unlike the colt that says, oh, go to the left. Okay. But this one, this 23 year old has learned from people. I am not going to do it. And I'm going to show you I'm not going to do it. So I've come up my steps and I come to this part where he says, I'm not going to go to that next step because this mule's fighting me. He's not wanting to do it right. So then I'll go ahead and work on that problem. I may not get it all fixed up at one time, but I may get a good start. And if it changes a little bit, I'll leave it alone. And then I'll go do some more and find another problem. The Colts, usually the, the Colts, you know, I, I always tell folks my grandmother can ride the majority of Colts. They're because, you know, they're, they're gentle. They're quiet. They're not like it used to be. I mean, 40 years ago, my goodness, these suckers were going to kill you, bite you, kick you, buck, you know, really bad. Today, everybody's petting these things. And the worst problem that people have is they get in their space. So I basically have these guidelines. I keep pushing the buttons. OK, will you listen with your nose? Will you give to the right? Will you give to the left? Will you back up? Will you pick up all the feet? And I keep going up those steps. And as long as they're going up the steps, I keep on going. If they don't go up the steps, then I'm going to stop right there, find out why, and go from there. And usually it's an older one. They've learned how to get around you. That's really helpful. I think that's going to be helpful for a lot of folks. Um, and it's something that I've always wondered. So we got a few more people watching here. We've got uh, Linda Dickman, Riverside, California. We've got Celeste Daniels from Florida. We've got Suze Kuiper saying Yolanda is on her way. So we'll hold out. Yolanda's going to join us. Uh, we've got uh, Sherry from Georgia, Debbie Olson, and uh, Nadine. Uh, lots of really good folks in here. So the next question that I've gotten, folks, if if you're just hopping on, Make sure that you say hello, put where you're watching from. We want to know that you're here. That's right. We want to know that you're here. And uh, and then also, um, if you haven't shared it out yet or shared the broadcast with some other folks who you know are you know, really going to benefit from what we're talking about here, go ahead and do that. That's how we keep this thing going. Um, the next question that I've got, this comes from Paul. It was an email. And he says, hi, Steve. I have a pretty good John broke, uh, pretty good broke John that reigns okay 
uh, and works off the leg. My problems are below and wondered what video recommendations you'd have. He crowns, crowds me when leading him and wants to go faster than me. He spooks at a lot of different things, bicycles, strange objects, gets distracted easily when things are far away, uh, and he's restless in the trailer, kicks the side, occasionally regards Paul. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, folks, this this isn't so much the training as it is the mule not wanting to go along with things. His, in a way, doesn't want to do something, so he throws a fit. So the crowding... Uh, what what they do when they crowd you, they're basically saying, move over here, move over there. Because when they crowd you, what do you do? You step back out of the way. Well, see, the mule can't verbalize, go stand over there. So he crowds you to get you to, to move where he wants you to move. So get the come along hitch on. And when you see the mule coming into your space, ask, tell, demand. Ask, tell, Rip his nose off. Demand. He's going to stop. People say to me, oh, I don't want to hurt him. Well, then you go ahead and get hurt. It's the mule will, the hair will grow back and they quit bleeding. <laughs> Folks, if it needs to be that, it's better than going over a cliff. It's important. So put the come along hitch on. When he goes too fast, Dave, we got some video of me with the come along hitch where I'm walking real slow and I'm showing people how the mule will do the same thing. Um, one of my clinics, I think we did here where, where, you know, I do just about every clinic. I do something with that, but get the come along hitch on and start building a foundation. Yeah, I had, uh, I responded back to him. I said, Hey, I'll make sure to ask Steve on our next live clinic event. Um, but then I said, here's a few resources that'll be uh, worth checking out. I sent them uh, the establishing leadership video series with that couple that came in. They had their two animals and basically went from catching them in the pen on their terms all the way into the arena and leading them through, you know, training and obstacles. Um, then uh, specifically halter training a mule or donkey. Then I shared with him some of your thoughts on the idea of desensitizing the problem mule building a new foundation starting kit, uh, trailer loading, trailer loading craziness, and then uh, Load him up. more trailer conversations. So I gave him plenty of resources. Hopefully this will be good to uh, to cap it off there. But you know, I feel like I feel like that you know th those questions there. It's it, it really does come back to folks saying, hey, why is my mule doing this? And the mule tells you if you're if you can look for the signs, if you can listen, if you can understand the mules telling you exactly why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. And a lot of times, too, you know, we we're in a saddle and the mule all of a sudden goes, oh, what's that? Well, you know, we actually compound it by grabbing or something like that when we should just relax when we're going. Just look straight ahead. Just like in your car. If you look off to the right, where's your car usually go? Off to the left, you know. So you're going down the trail. Uh, you are not going to desensitize them on everything. Not going to happen, folks. They ain't got enough. They got the, the part that, that takes that kind of information. Not much bigger than a walnut. So when they bugger a little bit, you know what? That's because it's a mule or a donkey or a horse. Or, you know, like I tell folks all the time, let go of the steering wheel and see what happens in your car. It's going to go wherever it wants. It's up to you to be the rider. It's up to you to be the leader here and, and, and ride it. Very good. So, um, got a couple, uh, uh, got a couple comments here related to the store. Uh, Pam says she's having a, she's wanting to know if the, uh, the DVDs are available digitally. Pam, yes, the DVDs are available digitally. Uh, get in touch with me, support at muleranch.com. We've been talking back and forth. Get in touch with me and I'll make sure you get taken care of. And then uh, Sundance Kid, I'm really pleased with my saddle. Such great quality. Thank you. We love hearing that. That's real fun yeah. for us. So thank He's you. He's had that saddle for 11 or 12 years now. Oof, that's awesome. Yeah. And he's been on several mules too. Him and his dad used to ride all the time. Neat people. They're in West Virginia. Just great people. Very good. Uh, let's see. Crawford's out in Alaska said it's finally 40 degrees during the day here. So we've been working with the mule, horse, and donkey. Sam is going to a natural hoof care trimming school next month. So he's hoping they come or cover donkey, mule, hooves plenty. Do you have any YouTube videos on hooves? We do. Steve, you want to just talk a little bit about hooves? You've, you've told me in the past, you've said the, the mule foot is the worst foot 
out of all of the equine out there because he's got the donkey foot. You want to talk real quick about what makes that that foot so bad and what unique needs they have as a result? Yeah, just just look at the donkeys, folks. It's That donkey foot is the worst one in the world because it contracts so much. It goes, it just it comes right down to nothing. Uh, and, and a lot of that has to do, folks, with how it's trimmed. Uh, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to have people throw rocks at me here in a lot of ways. But look, folks, natural trimming is okay, but the mule still needs shoes. Why is that? The back of the foot is, is where the frog is. And when that, when that back of that foot comes in, it makes the frog small and you're done. The natural trimmers, uh, and this sort of thing do, I guess they do okay with horses. I honestly have not heard, and I've also not seen good results. Uh, when Best of America by horseback was going from New, from Mexico to Canada on that big trek, several people came from North Dakota, North Carolina and Tennessee and all that part of the country to ride and they come with barefooted horses. They made it through four days of riding and they were done. They had to take them back uh, because the horses were flat, crippled up, bad. Uh, shoes, folks, as much as some of you don't like to have shoes, it is honestly the best way to keep animals so that they are correct. You, When you've got to correct a, uh, correct a foot, You've got to do it with shoes because when that hoof comes down, it comes down and it expands. It comes down and it expands. So it expands and contracts like this. That's what that hoof does. And when you, when the back of that heel starts coming around, look at the back of your foot, folks, especially on the front. You're going to see it's fairly narrow. That's because the animal wasn't trimmed correctly when it was, when it was, uh, younger. So going back to the, my Alaskan friends there, uh, don't listen to these folks that say you don't need to put shoes on them. You better, or you're going to have contracted heels. And when you have contracted heels, it, it's just, you know, don't, don't align your front end on your vehicle. Try that, you know, or try leaving parts off of it and see if your tires wear out. Yes, it will. Same thing here. Go out and go barefooted, folks, for a while. And see what that's like. Ain't gonna happen. I have, I have tried all the ways in the world to make my animals solid. And the best way is still one of the old ways. That is balance, balance, balance. You, you when you, when you're shaping one, you got to shape to the shoulder. Don't listen to these folks that you have to have a, a protractor out. You got to do this angle just right and this angle just right. You know, look at the slope of the shoulder. That's going to tell you the angles of your foot. One of the downsides of a lot of farriers that I'm seeing, and, and I know I'm on a soapbox here, but this is it gets pretty frustrating to me. Um, they clean that they take off too much heel, and then you end up with all kinds of diseases, and they're setting uh, hoof problems, and they're setting on top of a frog. Leave the heel alone. Leave the heel alone. Take it off at the toe. Have it the same angle as the shoulder. You'll do good. The video that I got there points that out. Very good. So hopefully that helps out a little bit. Um, I uh, I know that that's something that you've talked quite a bit about. About is the importance of taking care of those of those feet, just because they are so bad and they can get out of control pretty quickly. Oh yeah. Um, we've got a question uh, that got emailed here from Christy uh, Perkinson. So I'm going to read it. It's a little long. If you get the gist of the question, go ahead. You can interrupt me. But uh, she says, love watching the YouTube videos and the live talks. So hi, Christy, if you're watching. Um, Nine-month Molly Mule lover. Uh, got her leading, picking up her feet and grooming her all over. Question about trailer loading. Got a three-horse slant. Two slants have a manger. Um, my mule is leaning towards being a jumper out of her pasture. I pasture her with a trail riding mare and my gelded donkey. When I take my mare out, my little mule acts like she's going to jump the gate. I figure why not pony her and get her exposed to the trails. I'm an avid trail rider. I've loaded her six times and I'm having a problem with her moving under the divider and riding back, riding backwards. I can tie her shorter, but I have a manger that she can't comfortably reach. How do I stop that? Um, she would mature about 50. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Now, let me touch on this. 
Okay, number one, uh, is she using a rope halter or is she using a nylon halter? And if she's using a rope halter, is it adjusted correctly? Because here's the thing. When they're able to move around in a trailer like that, then that's very dangerous. You know, that's a good way to kill one. Mules love to ride backwards in a trailer. When I put my mules in a trailer, 99.9% .9 of the time, you know, when, like, when we, I'm, I'm going to be, we're going to be doing some video on down at the ranch and stuff. You'll see, we throw these mules in the back of the trailer, saddled up, bit it up and everything. Watch and see what they do. They turn around and they look backwards. That's what they do. They're far more comfortable. But if you have to tie them up, if you want to tie them up, use a rope halter that's adjusted. If you use a nylon halter, then you've got a good chance of taking that nylon and taking the steel and messing up the cheeks. They won't listen to nylon. They'll move all around. But if the halter's adjusted correctly, when they go to put their nose down, it's going to bump them. It's going to make them uncomfortable. They'll stay straight. And yes, take them on the trail and do a lot of oponium. Do a lot of that. Do not turn them loose. Always keep them on the lead. And then for the for the gate jumpers, uh, instead of doing the gate jumping, take the mule and tie it somewhere first where it's going to be safe. And then put your, your mare in a trailer and go from there. If they're jumping gates now, you're going to have mega problems later on. Very good. So I sent her back a message, said, hey. Steve, answer your question right here at about 34 minutes in. The next question that we got uh, comes from Kevin. Kevin's asking, is the small pin hard on them if you don't have time to exercise them regularly? No. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, unfortunately, we try to put our humanness into the animal. You know, uh, Their life is this, eat and drink, manure, urinate. That's the way the life is. Uh, uh, it, sure, it's nice if you've got a, a big old pasture to turn them loose in and they can walk around and this sort of thing and you're limited on your grass, you know, and they can exercise that way. That's all well and good. But you come here to my ranch, you're going to see each one of the mules in a 10 foot wide, 20 foot long stall. That's where they are day in, day out. And here's the thing. When I come to that gate, man, they want to get out of there. They want to go do something. The people that are having ones that are hard to catch, they're in bigger pens or they're out in a big old pasture. They don't need them. So definitely, you know, uh, I can't I can't say enough. 20 by 20 pen is plenty. That's all they need. Very good. So here is our question from the Netherlands. Uh, Suze Kuiper says, hi, Steve. What is your experience about giving a mule a piece of soft gingerbread? <laughs> I'm going to try this, Suze. We call it on bitch at co on 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 bidget coke breakfast cake when you suspect that there is a wood splinter in the stomach gingerbread when there's a wood splinter in the stomach any thoughts that's a new one that's a new one on me i've never heard that before uh what makes you think there's a splinter in the stomach i mean um you know there's a there's a, a lot of intestines that they have to go through before they get to a stomach um, hmm. I don't know. Um, that, that's a new one on me. I've never heard that one before. Which just goes to show we're always hearing new stuff. There's always Something and, new. And you know what? I've heard you say this a lot of times too. Even when stuff comes up that maybe you haven't heard, you, you'll say something like, "Hey, folks, if it if it works, hey, go go for it." So yeah, just send I, me some of that gingerbread. <laughs> see what I do. <laughs> do do that, you, Yolanda. I will eat your gingerbread. Morgisborg. Yeah. Smorgasbord, that's right. Let's yeah, see now, here. How do they know there's a splinter in the stomach? I, well, that's I, kind I, of I, what I was. That's kind. Of, Suze, Suze, would you tell me how? What? What is? How are you determining that there might be a splinter in the stomach? I'd be curious. So we'll hop. We'll keep going. Go ahead and follow up, and then we'll come back to it. Um, let's see here. Um, Celeste says, "Tell Steve, Celeste, Celeste Daniels, tell Steve that Scott's mule is doing much better." With her new come along hitch, it really works well. I was amazed. They truly do care more about their nose than their mouth. That's awesome to hear. I love that. That's, awesome. That's good. Um, Marcus says hi from Saratoga, New York. Hello, Marcus. Uh, let's keep going here. Yolanda says I am home. Yolanda's here. She didn't think she was going to make it. Hi, Yolanda. Yolanda and I have been chatting back and forth on WhatsApp. Um, oh, yeah. Let's see here. 
uh, Dorsey. Dorsey from uh, Kentucky, loving these sessions with you and Steve. Thank you so much, Dorsey. We love doing them. They're a lot of fun for us. Uh, Sue's put a, um, a picture of the uh, breakfast cake. I'll bring that up here in a section, uh, second. Um, let's see. Celeste asks the questions. The question, um, uh, how often does our mule need her hooves trimmed? So kind of along the shoeing there. How often does she need the hooves trimmed? Uh, six to eight weeks is a pretty much uh, a general. Uh, some, you know, some are, are faster growers than others. It has a lot to do with their feet and it has a lot to do with their exercise. But, you know, eight weeks is usually my max. Got to remember, folks, when it comes down to trimming, if the foot is not correct, if it is not balanced, then you're putting a lot of pressure on certain parts of the body. Just take him and uh, put a wedge up underneath your foot on one side and see how long it takes before your back's not hurting. So you got to remember that them feet are balanced uh, for the mule. And if, they, if they're well balanced, well trimmed, then, then it's going to do good. So every eight weeks. So then there was another follow-up that came in <clears throat> from the Crawfords. What are your thoughts on boots instead of shoes for the mule? We use Renegade boots for the horse and they seem to work awesome. Do you, you hear the silence? No boots. Shoes only. Metal shoes. Put them on. That will work. Folks, look. <laughs> I know that it works a little bit, right? And, and I know folks say, oh, well, he's doing good. I've done this. I've done that. Well, I've seen the end result of a lot of these things. Like, for instance, I've had a lot of clients that they don't want to put shoes on. They're going to put boots and I'm going to tell you, the majority of them have got back to me and have got tendon problems. Uh, they've got, uh, 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 oh, anyway, they've got all kinds of leg problems. Just go the old way of shoes. And if you're not uh, using them and they're standing, keep them barefoot and trim them up. But, you know, you've got a white line there. And basically, you look at it like this. Here's the three fingers. This right here is the hoof wall. Here's your white line. And here is da, 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 the coffin bone. All right. And this white line right here, that's the white line. It's like a shock absorber between the wall and the coffin bone. And what happens is right here, if you get a stone starts going up in there, it starts breaking down that fiber. Now I don't have the, the strength to try to keep my coffin bone from rotating. And when it rotates, they call it coffin bone for a reason. Because when it starts rotating, the mule, the horse, the donkey is done. Crippled. Done. You know? So you get a stone up into that white line. And you start. I've seen them come out at the top of the hoof. Even. You know? It takes a long time for that that fiber to, to build back up and get strength again. So lots of different things. Forget the boots. Forget the natural trimming because they don't need shoes. Ha ha. I tell you what, folks, you know, I'm right here in Arizona. I see a lot of wild horses, a lot of wild donkeys. You want to see sad? See one that hasn't been trimmed up and balanced and how crippled their legs are, you know, and this sort of thing. Right down the street here is the force. I mean, the uh, the uh, uh, Florence prison system. And Randy does a great job, you know, with these animals. But he he takes some of these animals and spends a long time of trimming and making them right. They're great horses, you know. But folks, without proper uh, uh, shoeing and without proper balance, you're done. you got to have, you, you just like your air, air in your tires, keep your air right in your tires. You keep your animal trimmed up and he'll last you for a long time. That's good. So I sent you a text message. I'm going to see if I can put it up here and show some folks on the screen. This is the this is the breakfast cake here. Oh, yum. Send it to me. How's that? I'll watch look? it disappear. Get that out here to Arizona. Oh man. I'll take I'll some. even share it with you, Dave. We'll have some of that ass tail to man coffee. <laughs> That's right. That's what we need to do. Um yeah, Yolanda ass says man, ass tail to man coffee with a good cake. Man, what a breakfast. Huh? That would be that would be a good afternoon. 
That's right. Sit so. on the porch, let the rain come down, listen oh. to it trickle, ask Tail Demand coffee with some breakfast cake. Oh, Woo. man, I'm making myself hungry right now. <laughs> uh, Yolanda says, hey, Steve, I took her temp with a blanket, and uh, that was now 37... Uh, point six degrees and took her I'm guessing Celsius Come and down, took her yeah. blanket uh, off waited 20 minutes and then it was 37.4 degrees but she is not right because but I caught it on tape and send it to Dave so bring that over well at least the temperature's coming down because before it was like 38.2 which is right around 100 mm. I don't mind going one going from 98 to 100 maybe 101 you know, that can happen and fluctuate, especially when you're putting saddle blankets on them and stuff. And right now, in Yolanda, I think it's somewhere around 11 o'clock there, 11.30, something like that. She's concerned about her mule having strangles. So I said, take it out. Don't feed it. Watch the water intake and do the temperature. And so if the temperature is dropping, go to sleep. Take a nap. Go, go see them tomorrow. 11.16 is the time that it says. 11.16, and they're joining us. Troopers. Yeah. Love it. Um, okay, next question that I got here. The question says, uh, was doing tarp training to help my mule uh, with confidence and uh, and look to me for guidance? What's your thought on this? You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great tool, uh, but you got to remember, it's not the desensitizing that you're doing. It's the mule listening to the lead rope. It's a mule listening to the come along hitch. The tart gives the animal a challenge. All right, it does. But you can also do other things as well. But just because they do the tarp here, don't mean they're going to cross water out there. It's all going to depend on your communication and, and building your confidence. Tarps are a great tool, but just remember, just because they do it here, don't mean it's going to change out there. It's like folks that have a big ball. They're kicking a big ball around uh, for desensitizing. Well, let's get a bear. See if we can kick that bear around see what happens. Yeah. Yep. Desensitizing is something that continues to come up over and over and over again. And, um, you know, I, 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 I love the idea of halter training. If they respect the halter, if they understand yeah. – the halter, if they truly do care about their nose more than they care about anything else in their comfort, they'll, that halter will become the main thing that they listen to or the, the communication will be the main thing that they listen to. And you won't have to – I mean I guess you always have to be you know worried and on cautious because they're wild animals. Uh, yeah. But, right. but nonetheless, yeah. as best you can, you can communicate with them and get them to do what you want them to do if you can control the nose, right? Yeah. I mean, you know – the simple thing of asking, telling, demanding, comfortable, uncomfortable, you get those five skills, uh, get some good basics on that, you can get a lot done, you know, uh, in a matter of minutes. You, you really can. And that come along hitch, man, it's a wonderful tool. Very good. So this one's a, another question. This one comes from Sarah. She email, emailed into us. I have a two, I have two yearling mammoth donkeys and would like a recommendation for the video that will be best to assist me in teaching them groundwork. I'm wonder, wondering between communicating with your mule, foundation colt starting, or donkey training. I've already purchased the come along hitch, hitch and rope halter to start. Thanks. Okay. I wonder if she, uh, she may not have got the kit where she needs the, uh, the problem mule building problem foundation. Mule. Yeah. 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 So she'll need that and definitely go with, uh, you know, all those videos will be helpful with your donkey. Just because it says mule don't mean nothing. Uh, it's still very, very helpful for your donkeys. But the don the saddle foundation for the donkey, uh, take that one. And then the problem mule. The problem mule video is going to show you groundwork. It's going to show you where this cowboy uh, had a hard time. And then he brought it to me. He's trying to drag the mule behind the pickup truck and everything else. But you'll see the end result. That's That's the way I do all of my colts. Very good. Um, so I wanted to get a little follow up on your, uh, on your, uh, trip down south. You were, uh, you took Jess and you were, you were moving cattle. Is that what you were doing? Yep. Yeah. We were tell, tell me a little bit about how that went. Well, what we were doing, we're taking replacement heifers. There was probably about, I think there was close to 60 head over there, a couple bulls as well. And we were taking the replacement heifers and they were the first time heifers. So they're getting ready to have their first baby. 
And uh, so we wanted to get them into uh, the headquarters. We kind of keep an eye on them. We're using uh, Baldy's down there, uh, which is a really good cow. They've got really good hips, and they do a good job of, uh, of, of mothering, but they do a good job of not having to worry about pulling calves. And uh, they usually do a good job of, of dropping their calves pretty good. So anyway, we took them over there. Uh, I, uh, I took Jess with me. Man, he did absolutely awesome. He, he, he really shined good. Matter of fact, the, my buddy of mine that runs the ranch down there, he said, man, just in a short time, Jess is really doing good. I put Jess over by this cattle guard. We're usually moving cattle by. And sometimes these cattle see an opening. They jump through it. And so there's a cattle guard there. Sometimes they'll even try to jump over that cattle guard. So somebody has to be there to keep them animals from going through that, that gate, the opening gate, and a cattle guard. Remember, cattle guards are, are piped in the ground that with slots between. So an animal gets foot caught in there if they're not careful. And a cow's dumber in a box of rocks, so they can do it. But anyway, I took Jess, and I sent him over that way. Uh, and he went around, and when he got to the gate, I had him go down and wait, and he, he laid there in sphinx position like this, watch him as each one of them cows were going by, and they'd see Jess, and they kept right on going. they see Jess, and they kept, oh, here comes, there's that dog, you know, and went right by him really good. He did awesome, and I rode a really good mule off, yeah. uh, really nice mule. Uh, the owner's mule, matter of fact. And so I like riding those mules. When I go down there, I tune them up. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, there's nothing like the butt of a cow to put a mind on a, on a mule or a donkey, you know, or, or a horse if you have lower standards, but it's, it's really good. So Dave, we'll be going down there. Uh, I was down there. They have 10 different mules and I put these, uh, I was putting my trees on them and shooting some pictures and this sort of thing. So when you and I go down there, we'll shoot some videos, and uh, we've got a new video coming out on Saddle Fit uh, for each one of the saddles. Uh, so we're kind of updating some things a little bit, folks. Instead of seeing a, a skinny younger guy, you're going to see a fat old guy. That's me. Uh, Don't hold it against him, though. Be David. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to update those videos and, and give you some more information. That's what we want to do, right, Dave? I mean, the information is there. It's wonderful. On a daily basis, Dave, I have people say, first thing they say to me, thanks for calling me back. They've tried to call so many other people and they don't call them back. And uh, so, and they're amazed that when I do call, it's me yeah. that they talk to. And then I help them out. And people say, gosh, you know, you, I've watched all your videos. I have, I have. I have people tell me that's their date night. <laughs> they'll, go, <laughs> they'll go and and plug in some of my DVDs or watch some of my YouTube stuff. And that's their date night uh, that night, you know? That's funny. And, and, and what's fun too is they say, you know, Steve, now I see, I see all these mules on the, on the, uh, on the internet and I see where their saddles are and I, and I watch them. They're doing like you say, well, good folks. That's what I want you to do. Show everybody else. Right, Dave, you know, share this with, share this with people, you know? Yeah. Uh, and see if you don't see a difference. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that people are saying, wow, my donkey changed. My mule changed. But you see, I didn't do it. You did it. And that's what's important, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And keep, keep learning new things. And it's, it's, it's fun to get those comments. Um, I was just looking through Facebook and, you know, we'll, we'll put stuff up there. Um, we'll say, um, you know, hey, what are you working on this weekend? Um, who's working with their mule? Uh, let's see here. We had a, uh, we had um, we put that out there. Who's working with their mule? And uh, Maria Ranson said, just did seventeen and a half miles on my sweet Emma, uh, Emma Jen on Saturday, giving her a break today. And then I, I wrote back to her. I said, how she do? She goes, she's tough as nail. Although deep Florida sand is hard for her, going to start endurance with her next fall. She's my biggest joy. A half. Uh, half linger Molly with a little attitude, but lots of love. We get along great. So that's fun <laughs> well, to hear. Uh, you Jerry bet. And, says and I did rest. Some... What's that? That rest is super important. Yeah. You know, I, I I'm going to tell you, uh, folks override these mules when they go on these, these, uh, camp outs and stuff. And they wonder why their backs are sore. Well, you put a backpack on your, your pack after you've been sitting around for a couple of weeks 
and try to go on the side of a mountain and say, tell them your back's not going to be sore. Your back's going to be sore. Yeah, yeah, give them that rest, folks. They need it. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So a couple others that came in. Let me uh, let's see. Uh, Jerry says, I did some groundwork standing at the hitching rail. So that's fun. Uh, Nadine, uh, with if you're still watching here, Nadine, I hope you're still watching. Uh, we did a bit of groundwork and then had Clipper Day. Once Wes decided that I wasn't gonna go, uh, wasn't going to just let it go, he stood mostly still and endured. Comparing that to the first time I turned on the Clippers, he bolted for a different state. Huge accomplishment. Good. Good That's for fun. you. Uh, Kate, Kayla Ronan did some obstacle work. Folks, if you're not following us on, uh, on Facebook, you need to be. Kayla's got a great photo here, um, that she, uh, that she sent in doing some obstacle work. Real fun. Uh, David Schultz said trying to burn some fat off of them and shows them, uh, oh. racing around there. Did circles both directions, uh, says Tammy, who's watched us, uh, a bunch. Uh, so it's fun hearing what people are working on, which it, folks, if you're, if you're just hanging out, uh, and you got a question, go ahead and put that in the comment section. I, I, I went through all the questions that I had so far for today. So we're just kind of hanging out now talking shop. Um, but if you've got any more questions, put them in the comment section. And if you're just, you're just popping in, this is your first time here. Make sure you let us know that you're here. Uh, we want to say, uh, we want to say hello. Um, you had any, uh, you have any things coming up that you're real excited about? Steve, the Hoosier Festival, you got that coming up. What's that going to be like? Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I've got people emailing me now quite a bit saying, hey, we hear that the venue has changed and uh, are you going to be there still? And I said, yeah, I'm, you know, I think those folks at the Hoosier, uh, those are, those all are volunteers. It's a great, great place. Lots of information. There's going to be some good clinicians there this year. Um, Pat Pirelli's going to be there. Myself's going to be there. I just lost his other. Ken uh, McNabb is going to be there. You know, Ken does a great job of communication uh, in this sort of thing. And 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 Pat's always <laughs> Pat's been around for a hundred years, and he's a great guy. Uh, uh, it's just like anything else. By golly, you're going to go there. You're going to learn some good, bad, and ugly, but go. You know, it's going to be good. Uh, I don't really have anything lined up, Dave, other than, than working down at the ranch quite a bit and, uh, and and doing that and then shipping stuff out. By golly, we've been doing a lot of shipping. Uh, we've had a lot of rain here, so right now my tractor is uh, busy uh, keeping roads up. We're getting ready to bring some AB in so that we can uh, take some of the mud away, but we're doing fine there. Uh, my 49 Mercury has uh, been a lot of fun. I'm, uh, I've got a car show I'm going to go to this weekend and, uh, I'm kind of getting my childhood back in, I guess, uh, with these, this hot rod stuff. So my 49 Mercury, I've been doing some work on it, getting it together. You know, a lot of folks don't realize I don't have any mules. I, I haven't had any mules since 2002. So what I was actually doing, folks, I was riding everybody else's mules. Yeah. They, they would bring them to me to train. I didn't have time for my own. So when I come back from the world championships in 2002, I sold my jack. I sold my mares. I quit packing people back in the mountains. And I saw that Mr. Mule and Mr. Donkey, they needed somebody to help folks understand them. So that's what I started doing. Uh, you know, since 2002, just being at it steady, um, and, 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 and helping folks out and traveling all over the United States like I have. But, uh, uh, my, my thing is right now, Dave, this, with these, with these shows like this Facebook, yeah. I talked to some people today and they said they actually give up their Facebook account. They'd like to watch it. They gave it up. And I said, no, no, just go over to YouTube, right, Dave? Yeah. We put, yeah, all these videos we post over to YouTube. And what I'm looking at right now, um, I'm looking at how we can broadcast to Facebook and YouTube at the exact same time. There's some services out there, so I got to check out and see wow. which ones are going to be good. But, you know, uh, we've got uh, close to 3,000 people who, who hang out with us over here on Facebook uh, on our page. We've got another, you know, uh, of course, some of them are going to be, you know, on both. But there there's another 3,000 uh, folks who are hanging out with us excuse me, over on, uh, over on YouTube. So I'd love to be able to do some live broadcast back and forth because yeah, I've got a couple, um, emails in the inbox right now from folks saying the same thing. Hey, I, I don't have Facebook. How do I watch? Well, we put all of the broadcasts 
um, the replays up on YouTube so folks can watch whenever they want to. Um, and one thing we do, I don't know if you knew that we did this, Steve, but um, you, YouTube's real cool. When I put one of the replays up there, we go through. I have uh, Barb, who Steve knows Barb. She's been out on the ranch. Barb works with me, been working with me for um, about 10 years. But, uh, but when Barb goes through, she writes up a, a description for what we talk about, and then she puts the time. The time uh, for every single question. So when we go through question by question, she writes down the time in the description. You can actually click on any YouTube video that does this. Click show description. And if you want to watch the part about shoeing, you just click the little time that says, you know, 647. Boom. Takes you right to 647 in the video. It's real cool. So folks can jump around and find exactly what they're looking for. Uh, you know, these typically go about an hour long. They don't got to sit there and watch the whole thing. So I'll put a link in the comment section so folks can go check out and watch the, uh, watch the replays, but they're all up there and we're constantly adding new stuff. And, and before you know it, Steve, we're at an hour right here. It just goes by, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it goes by. You bet. Uh, you know the other thing I've been we talked about. Other things I've been doing is uh, I really love this uh, being a volunteer at the Queen Valley Fire Department. Yeah. Uh, Captain uh, Richard, he's uh, Matthews. He's watching right now, uh, and and I tell you what, these guys are dedicated. These the couple gals we got, including Richard's wife, are dedicated. Uh, and you know, there's training all the time. We had some training last night. We're constantly going at it, and. Um, and it, it's a wonderful thing. But I, I, I'm having so much fun training, having people talk to me on the phone and say, I've watched your YouTube and I didn't know how to do it, but now I do. That's the neat thing, Dave. They are doing it. Yeah. I'm not touching them. Folks, you don't need a trainer. If Gary Green's on, watching right now from New Mexico, he sent me some video of a, quote, trainer working on his meals. And he says, Steve, I don't think it's right. And I said, yeah, you're right. It's not. It's a cowboy horse with horse training pulling him around. Gary can do it himself, and this time next month, Gary's going to be doing awesome. Yep, very good. Well, that is another hour, and I I, I know that Facebook's been having problems just about all day. So if anybody, if it kind of cut out here and there, you didn't get the part that you wanted, or or you missed some, um, I put the the link in the um, in the comment section for YouTube, but I don't even know if it's showing up there. I, I've been posting comments, and, and folks, if you've been commenting and I haven't been uh, saying anything, there's a good chance that Facebook's not showing them to me. I'm I'm looking at uh, their status page right now, and it says that they've had a partial outage for the past six hours. So hey, yeah. I just want to let you know that we're super glad that you were here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, spending time with us. Um, the one thing that you you can do that will really help us out a lot is to share this broadcast. Click that share button um, down below the video uh, and let folks know that they can find us here and and they can they can discover the question to why does my mule do that? Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Oh, I just thought about something. Yeah. Bishop World Championship Mule Days is coming into their 50th year this year. I won't be able to make it. I got some other things going, but folks, let me tell you, that's going to be awesome. You're going to hear me talking about it uh, uh, in, in, in a couple more months, just before the, the 50th anniversary comes on. You know, it's something to see. It's going to be a great big deal. Uh, I know a lot of the guys that have competed there for years and uh, in, in packing and this sort of thing. But that Bishop Mule Day is going to be something to see this year, folks. You need to see it. That'll be great. Well, we'll leave on that. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Yep. We will uh, we'll talk to you soon. If you have any questions, uh, send a message to uh, myself, support at muleranch.com. If you want to get a hold of Steve, 602-999-MULE, right? 602-999-6853. Feel free to call him. If, uh, if you don't get a hold of him, leave a voicemail. Steve does answer all his voicemails, and there's a good chance – that for the next little bit, he's going to be out there working on his gate, right, Steve? Yeah, yeah, I got to go out there. Wind's blowing nine zero, and this gate probably weighs three hundred pounds. Yeah, so I, I need to get it into place. I had my border collie out there with me, and he just kind of hunkered down in the ranger and said, "It's windy and cold out here," you know. <laughs> yeah. And he's the one with the fur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good, awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. All righty, bye bye.